Sophie Lacroix, 19, studies fashion design at La Salle College. It's the beginning of December, and the end of the semester is coming. She was brought to the ER by a classmate who was worried about her. Sophie mentioned her will to make everything stop to her classmate. After being assessed by the ER doctor, a request for admission to the short-term unit is made on Sophie's behalf. The ER nurse provides you with Sophie's admission report on a paper. You then proceed to admit Sophie to the unit. The nurse, when approaching the user's bedside, wears a panic button on her waist. Wearing a panic button when visiting the user's room is an essential safety measure. With this button, the nurse can discreetly send an SOS alert to quickly contact emergency services or a trusted person when she feels threatened or in the case of imminent risk of aggression. Hi, come with me. Hi, Sophie. My name is Mary. I'll be your nurse for today. So if this is your room, you can just have a seat. I have a few questions for you, and then we'll tour the unit together, okay? okay. You can leave your bag on the floor. Okay. There are principles that must be respected in order to ensure the safety of caregivers. These include maintaining a safe distance between the caregiver and the user, informing the team of where they are and for how long, and making sure they carry a communication system to notify someone if the situation deteriorates. It is important to always guarantee access to the exit door and to keep the door open so that the nurse can quickly leave the room if necessary. It is also important to avoid face-to-face -face interviews with the user. Sideways or angled interventions should be preferred. Okay, so how are you, Sophie? Can you tell me why you're here? My, my roommate brought me here. I just told her that I wanted everything to stop, so she dropped me off here. When initiating a dialogue, it is important to always ask open-ended questions to establish effective communication. So, do you understand why she was scared to be you? Was she right to be? Maybe. I, I don't know. I just haven't been really thinking clearly lately. Okay. And you said you wanted everything to stop. What do you mean by everything? I've been sad all the time. and I... I haven't had motivation for anything, and I, I, I wasn't like that before. Okay. The nurse uses paraphrasing. It conveys the feeling that the user is being listened to and confirms the understanding of what they are saying. The nurse also observes the user's nonverbal behavior in order to perform a complete mental status assessment. She pays attention to appearance, motor behavior, language, emotional state, thought processes, perceptions, and cognitive functions. So you weren't like that before what? Before I moved for college. Okay, you've been feeling, feeling this way ever since you moved here? Yeah, well, no, it's been going on for about a few months. Okay. Maybe. And you said that you don't have motivation for anything, but what do you do during the day? I try to go to class, but most days I just stay in bed because I can't sleep at night. Okay, you have trouble falling asleep or you, you wake up often? I have issues falling asleep. And usually I have to drink to fall asleep. Okay, how many drinks do you usually have? Usually three, maybe four after nine. Then I fall asleep, but mm -hmm. I wake up because I'm so so much stress and I, I can't fall back asleep. Okay. And uh, apart from alcohol, have you tried anything else to help you sleep? No. Okay. And and when you drink, does it does it affect your your day to day activities or have the people around you mentioned something about your your drinking? No. No. Okay. Do you do you take any other substances like drugs? No, no, nothing like that, no. Okay. These questions will also allow the nurse to evaluate if the user presents a risk of withdrawal by stopping her consumption during the hospitalization. Okay, and 
How's your appetite? I don't really eat anymore, but when I do, it's just nibbles. Okay. Lack or loss of appetite are symptoms of depression that the nurse has to evaluate, especially in the presence of suicidal thoughts. Okay, so earlier you mentioned that you feel a lot of stress. Are you under a lot of stress? Yeah? Yeah, it's, the past few weeks have been really stressful with mm -hmm. the exams coming up. Mm -hmm. Okay, and earlier you also said that you wanted it all to stop. So do you, do you have suicidal thoughts? Have you attempted suicide? It, it's crossed my mind a few times. Okay, and do you know how you would have done it? I would have taken Tylenol and beer. Okay. And uh, where would you have done it? At my apartment, in my room. Okay. Do you know when? No, I haven't really put much thought in the time. Mm -hmm. It is important to name the suicidal thoughts. The nurse has to ask clear questions about the topic without using a veiled approach. She asks the user about her plan, developing on the how, the where, and the when, how she intends to commit suicide, where it is going to take place, and when. The more specific the plan, the greater the suicidal urgency. The nurse assesses whether there is a potential for the user to commit suicide in the next 48 hours. She will then implement surveillance measures depending on her assessment of how dangerous the user is to herself. Do you feel like you're in control of your actions? Do you sometimes act on impulse, maybe without, without thinking much? I, I'm not the kind of person that acts on impulse. I'm really not impulsive. I, I'm an overthinker. Okay. Asking this question allows the nurse to assess how likely the user is to attempt suicide based on her level of impulsiveness. So, do you think about it often? It has crossed my mind a few times, but no, I, I know it's not, it's not the answer. Oh, you're right. That, that's reassuring. Okay. We could actually look at the options you do have available to help you other than suicide, of course. Had you looked into other options to help you? No, I haven't really given it much thought. Mm -hmm. But you're in the right place here, okay? So we'll be here, we'll take our time, we'll help you get better. We'll follow your needs and expectations, and we'll stay with you throughout the entire recovery process, okay? Thank you. The nurse is reassuring and positively reinforces the fact that the user can come to seek for help. She must have a welcoming and respectful approach. At all times, she has to stay open-minded and refrain from voicing any judgments about the client's situation. Empathy is crucial for the patient to feel understood in order to create a therapeutic alliance. Okay, so you said you just moved here. Do you know anybody in the area? Do you have any friends? No, I don't really have any friends here. All my friends are back in my hometown. Okay. I, I'm not really good at making friends. Do you have someone close to you that could help? Actually, there's my sister and my parents. I mean, they're still back home, so it's far, but they're, they've always been there for me, so I, I know they'll help. Mm -hmm. It's great. It, it's reassuring to know that you have people that, that mean a lot to you. If you want, we could call them later. No? So, since you have suicidal thoughts, we will have to monitor you more closely, okay? And um, if you want, we can tour the unit together. I'll show you the bathroom and how everything works. And then we'll have to look through your bag. We'll unpack it together, and I will have to remove some, maybe some items that could be dangerous since you do have suicidal thoughts. Is it okay? Yeah, it's okay. Actually, it makes me feel safer. We'll, we can go through it later. Okay. If the nurse deems that the user is at risk of being a danger to herself, she mm -hmm. could take her to a seclusion room with constant monitoring. If, if the risk is not eminent, so she could girl. simply increase her rounds and monitoring of the user's room. The user has to be made aware that they will be monitored very closely. This monitoring must be included in the care plans as well as the therapeutic nursing plan and must be adjusted when needed.
it is essential for the nurse to perform a search of the client's personal belongings to remove any potentially dangerous items such as breakable objects.